Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video. In this video, I'm talking about the 338 Weatherby RPM cartridge. That's the rebated precision magnum. A lot of buzz, a lot of talk, a lot of questions from you guys on exactly what we're talking about today. But we're talking about 338 Weatherby RPM. Right now, they are loading it in four different loadings. Two Barnes TTSX, a Nosler Acubond, and a Hornady Interlock. All 225 grain projectiles with the exception of 185 grain Barnes TTSX. In this video, I'm going to do the drop charts and I'm going to do the energy at different distances. How much does it drop when you go out? How much energy does it retain when you go out? That is going to answer a bunch of you guys' questions. And then I'll just send this link to you and you'll say, hey, check it out. Here's how much energy it has at XYZ range, and here's the drop if you're looking at checking them out. But for this video, I'm doing all the testing with this Weatherby Mark V Backcountry 2.0, obviously chambered in 338 Weatherby RPM. It has an 18-inch barrel. For the two barns that I'm going to chronograph, this is the 225 grain TTSX. Weatherby prints a muzzle velocity of 2,800 feet per second, but that's with a 24 inch barrel. So we're going to see what we get out of the 18 inch barrel. And then the 185 grain TTSX, they print a speed of 3,100 feet per second. And same thing, that's out of a 24 inch barrel. So we got to get our 18 inch barrel chronograph speed data, and then we'll do the drops. Let's run to the range real quick. All right, now I'm going to try to get a reading on the speeds of these 185 grainers. Let's go ahead and send three and see what our chronograph's telling us. Don't want to hit the chronograph. We have done that several times. <laughs> here we go. Number one here. Got a speed of 2830 feet per second. Let's send a second. Twenty-eight, twenty-four. Pretty consistent there. Let's go for a third. And that one read as a twenty-eight forty-nine. Now I'm going to load up three of the 225 Barnes TTSX. Twenty six oh four. Twenty five seventy eight. Twenty-five ninety-four. The last reading on those. So let's get those down, and we'll look at the averages and do some drops. All right. So we got those average speeds for the one eighty-five TTSX. My average was twenty-eight thirty-four, and then for the two twenty-fives, my average was twenty-five ninety-two feet per second. Caveat. My chronograph is like the cheapest one out there, so there may be some slight inconsistencies, but for what we're doing, I think it's fair enough readings that I got from my chronograph. So what I'm going to do here, and why does this matter? Well, I'm going to do drop charts and energy charts real quick for you guys for all four of those 338 Weatherby RPM factory loadings. This is a purpose-built backcountry rig. Magnum performance while having a lightweight rig. The purpose behind this machine, it's a purpose-built rig. Lightweight, yet still having that Magnum. So, that shorter barrel, it reduced the velocities just a smidge, uh, but that's literally the whole point of that rig. Magnum performance in a lightweight package. But, when we talk about drop, obviously, if you're hunting, you got to know your drop so you can get what you're aiming at. But energy, why does energy matter? Well, eh, you got to have enough energy to take that animal, right? When it comes to big game hunting, a lot of people will tell you, 
hey, you need to have at least a thousand foot pounds of energy to take a deer. And a lot of people will tell you, hey, you need to have at least 1500 foot pounds to take an elk. So as that boo lot is traveling, it's losing energy. So at what point does that have enough to take a big game animal? So we're gonna look at that too. So first off the bat, let's look at the chart that I did for the 185 grain TTSX. You can see I plugged in my initial velocity of 2,834 feet per second. My sight height is specific to my specific rig, uh, measured that. And then I did all these with a 200 yard zero. So the BC on these 185s is at 0 0.431 on the G1 scale. Sighted in at 200 yards. Go down to 300 real quick. This chart is saying it's dropping 7 inches or 2.4 MOA or 0.7 mils. Go down to 400, it's a 22 inch drop, 5 MOA or a 1.5 mil. Out to 500, we're talking about 45 inch drop, 8.5 MOA or 2.5 mil dial. So we're at 500 now, 500 yards. Let's go out to the energy. So these 185s. At 500 yards, this chart is saying 1435 foot-pounds of energy at 500 yards. So that's borderline of what most people might say, hey, that's good enough for elk. Uh, plenty for deer on out to, it has that 1,000 mark of foot-pounds all the way out to 700 yards with this loading. Now let's jump in. By the way, we'll point out it stays supersonic past a thousand yards, according to this chart. Now let's jump over, do the same thing with the 225s. Now that you know what we're talking about here, we're going to go rather quick. BC on these 225 barns is 0.514. All the rest is the same. Also, altitude, I've got it plugged in here at sea level. Sighted in at 200 yards again, you can see the drops. Let's go to that 500 yard mark. Dropping 51 inches from a 200 yard side in, or almost 10 MOA, or getting close to 3 mil dial there at 500 yards with that 200 yard side in. Now, at 500 yards, let's go over to the second to last column and talk about the energy. 225 is carrying more energy out to that 500 yard mark, 1637 foot pounds. This one has a thousand foot-pounds of energy all the way out to 800 yards, where the 185s was only about 700 yards. And this one stays supersonic past 1,100 yards. Now let's jump to those Hornady interlocks. BC on these is the lowest out of the group, a point nine or a point three nine seven rather. 2655 feet per second at the muzzle. These, let's go ahead and jump out to 500 yards from that 200 yard zero. 54 inches of drop at 500, 10.4 MOA, right at a three mil dial at 500 yards. Going over to the energy at 500, 1377 at 600 yards. It's got still 1100 foot pounds of energy. So the Hornady interlocks uh, hit that 1000 just after 600 yards. Uh, and these stay supersonic to 900 yards. So they go subsonic here before the 1,000 yard mark. Now let's jump to the last one quick. These are the Nosler Acubons, which out of these four projectiles has the highest ballistic coefficient of that 0.55 there, uh, which is gonna help us as we get out further in range. Let's go ahead and jump to that 500 again. From a 200 yard zero, it's dropping 47 inches. A nine MOA dial at 500 yards in mils, only a 2.6. So comparing that to the previous one, the Hornady was over a three mil dial, 2.6 with the Nozzlers at 500 yards. How much energy we have at 500 yards? 1800 foot pounds still at 500 yards. That is some serious horsepower. 600 yards, we still have 1577 foot pounds. 700, we're still at 1362. Going out to 900 yards, the Nosler Acubon still have over a thousand foot pounds of energy 
and these stay supersonic out past 1,200 yards. <clears throat> but hey, guys, there you have it. There is the real quick drop chart and energy chart on the four loadings that Weatherby is doing with their 338 Weatherby RPM. Backcountry rig, purpose built around Weatherby's six lug action. They're able to keep that thing a really lightweight package. So I'm impressed. I'm getting really good groups um, out of the 185 and 225 Barnes TTSX. Those are the loads I've been able to get my hands on so far. Amazing, consistent groups. Uh, going to do my best to, to film a hunt with it here pretty soon. Also going to do my best to stretch it out and use these charts. Dial it on there. Take it out long range doing some steel target shooting too. Um, I think that'd be a whole lot of fun testing that out as well. But hey, appreciate y'all watching. Quick one. Tons of you guys asked for it, so I wanted to take the time quick today and do those charts for you. There's the drop and the energy of the four factory loadings from Weatherby in their 338 RPM. Throw out a caveat there. I did all these at sea level. Um, and I did all these with my sight height. Um, if you are in somewhere, um, different temperatures, different sea levels, all that affects this. So this isn't a 100% take it to the bank thing, you know. Oh, I'm going to go hunting. Oh, Hootie's video said dial it for nine mils at 500. Well, you need to make sure that yours is, this is also sighted in at 200. You may not do that either. So, uh, make sure... If you're taking yours out, make sure you know what you're doing. Adjust your charts for the temperature, for the uh, muzzle velocity of your rig, for your sight height, and all that jazz. Make sure that when you plug yours in, you're using your data. It can make a difference, especially uh, if you're way up there in the mountains. You know, if you're at 8,000 feet, 10,000 feet, hey, that's that can make a big difference on your drop. Uh, especially if you're hunting, you don't want to miss or even worse, wound something. So... Appreciate y'all watching. A bunch of you guys asked for it. I want to do the video real quick today. Appreciate y'all watching. We got the best viewers on the interwebs. Y'all already know that. Make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned. We got videos coming out every single day. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you on the next one. Hootie hoo. Oh.